Hello everyone, Neil Tappin here from Golf Monthly. I hope you are well and staying safe during this really strange and difficult time that so many of us are going through right now. Um, in this video, we have a list of 15 of the world's most beautiful golf courses for you. Now, I appreciate that if you are stuck at home, this might feel a little bit like torture, but hopefully instead, it's that pure golfing escapism that I know that so many people are looking for right now. Um, to help us with this list, um, we are going to be speaking via video to Kevin Murray. Now, Kevin is one of the world's leading golf course photographers. It is his job to travel the world and take photographs of courses. And it's really his list that we've asked him to put together. We're going to be talking through it with him and putting a load of his photographs on the screen so you can really get an appreciation for all of these different uh, venues that he's talking about and hopefully it just gets you excited about the prospect of playing golf again whenever that might be safe to do so. Now before we get into that content just a couple of other things I wanted to mention. Firstly I do hope that everybody is staying safe uh, out there. Uh, if you are in the UK that means staying away from the golf course which is really really difficult and I think it's particularly difficult for, for us right now because we've just come through the worst winter that I can remember certainly with so much wet weather, so many golf courses have been closed for quite long periods and finally the weather appears to be on the up and we're all stuck at home again so it it, just, it does feel really difficult and I wanted to know how you're getting your golfing fixed during this period please do leave some comments below we'd be really interested to hear your thoughts about how you're getting uh, staying engaged with golf during this period and to help with that I also want to mention the Golf Monthly YouTube channel obviously we have a whole host of content that we'll be posting over the coming weeks and months. Um, much of this stuff has been shot on the golf course. We tend to shoot things quite a long time in advance of when we need them. So we'll continue to post this throughout this period. So hopefully that provides that bit of golfing escapism that we all need, I think, during this time. Uh, and finally, I did want to mention the Golf Monthly featured product partnerships. Uh, so this year we teamed up with Titleist. Uh, uh, we have their, we use their golf bags and their golf balls in our videos. And also Footjoy were wearing their clothing and their footwear in our videos. Um, if you are stuck at home thinking about your golf game, thinking about something to do, check out the links below. Uh, take a look through what these guys have to offer on their websites. It might provide that little bit of golfing inspiration that you're looking for right now. Um, right, that's enough for me for now. Uh, let's speak to Kevin Murray and talk through his 15 most beautiful golf courses. Okay, so Kevin Murray, hello, how are you? I'm good, Tappers, how are you? I'm all right, how are you surviving the lockdown? Um, I'm coping, I'm coping, I'm finding stuff to do, you know, catching up on uh, a few things that um, I put off, you know, I'm doing some uh, post-production work on images that I've taken over the years and just adding them to the, uh, the portfolio. So, yeah, I've got stuff to do, I'm missing getting out, missing playing golf, I've ordered up... You know, <laughs> yeah, I know. But I've ordered up um, a practice net for the back garden, which I hope will turn up sometime this week. So at least can get out and hit a few balls. But uh, yeah, waiting for that to happen. Sounds dangerous. Now, <laughs> before we before we um, before we get going and go through your list, uh, just tell us a bit about yourself. Tell us a bit about your work as a course photographer, your, you know, background in golf. Give, us, give everyone a bit of an intro as to who you are. OK, well, I've, I've been in advertising all of my career um, and um, I've been working in the golf industry for about 25 years. Um, I was credit director on the Callaway Golf account uh, for about five or six years. And then I set up my own business, Bandit Design, purely to work in the golf industry. Um, and then I had an opportunity to do some work for the Lynx Trust at St Andrews. They gave me a photograph I didn't like. I went out and took a sample shot, said this is what I'd like the shots to be, how they, how they should look. We'll find a photographer to do them. I'll art direct. Uh, and then the Lynx Trust said, look, why don't you take some shots? And I hadn't even thought about it, Tappers, um, in that respect. Um, uh, and they said, we'd like you to shoot all of the Lynx golf courses at that time. That was like 15 years ago. So that was a baptism of fire. Didn't even have a proper camera. And then since then, um, I've shot nearly 500 golf courses worldwide. And of course, I've done all the work with um, with Golf Monthly, which, again, is another st side of the story, which I love doing because that's working with you guys and with the players. So, yeah, many of the, the 
cover shots that you would have seen, the players that you've seen on the cover of Golf Monthly or in the magazine. Well, let's get into it then, uh, starting with number 15 on your list and Bermuda and uh, a golf course called Port Royal. That's right, Port Royal. Um, it's a beautiful golf course. Um, we've been going out there for like the last 30 years for family holidays. And I think for me, Port Royal is probably my favourite out of all of them. Um, it's got um, this amazing par 3 16th, uh, which um, from a visual point of view is extremely frightening because all you've got is ocean on the left hand side. Uh, you've got a massive kind of steep wall on the right hand side, but that's not really a bailout hole. Um, and uh, it's got, you know, there's just something about it. It's very undulating. They've now got the um, PG, uh, PGA Tour event there every year for the next four years. But it's a great golf course, a real challenge. Um, yeah, if you if you get a chance, uh, if you're ever over in um, in Bermuda, Port Royal, give it give it a go. Okay, so from Bermuda, we're now going to uh, the United Arab Emirates. Quite a long yep. trip, actually, if you want to do that in one go. Um, and a golf course that was designed by Gary Player. Muzzle, you were you were there right from the very, I'd say from before the beginning, weren't you? You were there um, during the phase at which they were starting to create this golf course from scratch. For me, straight away, you could see um, how good a golf course this was going to shape up to be. Gary Player's concept um, with the golf course was to uh, was tone. He wanted all these different colours to be coming through. So he had even you know different different coloured sand in the bunkers, so that you could get an idea of depth just by the way that he um, he he coloured up the bank uh, the bunkers. Plus, also he had these native grasses. But the reason for it was that it was to be um, you know uh, more effective with um, with the watering of the golf course. Obviously, out in you know in the UAE, that is an issue. And so they've utilised that as an aspect to um, uh, not only uh, make the golf course, you know, sort of sustainable, but also from a visual point of view, it is really quite spectacular. It is. And a great testament to Gary Player as a golf, as a course designer. Um, so moving on. Yeah. Uh, number 13 is uh, in Turkey. It, yeah, it's Likia, uh, Likia links in Turkey. It's, uh, it's, it's on that Belek uh, strip. I mean, I think there's something like 16 different golf courses down there and they're all spectacular. Um, most of them have been built um, uh, through the pine trees. Um, the, there was in that area uh, to protect the farming, they put this kind of um, wall of uh, pine trees up against the coast and um, what they've now done is they've allowed the golf courses to be developed. Um, each individual pine tree is numbered and protected. What I like about Lichia is it's totally different because it is a proper Lynx golf course. But what really makes this unique, as you'll see from the photographs, is the bunker. And they've got these kind of sleepers um, in, in most of the bunkers, which, again, from a visual perspective, um, gives it depth, but it also makes it very, very unique. It's a, it's a, it's a good place. Yeah, photographs look absolutely stunning. Yeah. Um, next one on the list, Gran Canaria. So this one is a venue that I think you and I did a, a photo shoot for Golf Monthly here a few years back. Um, you've made a, some lasting friendships <laughs> at this venue, haven't you, Mother? This is Melanaris Golf in Gran Canaria. That's right. I mean, this was actually my first uh overseas photo shoot, shoot for um golf monthly it, it was a bit of um, a kind of like baptism of fire for me having not uh, done a you know a, a shoot like that before um but i've been back there several times since uh cam proctor who's the director of golf there has become a very good friend and but it's also um the home course of, uh, of of Rafa. So we've done a few shoots with him there as well. The the holes from uh, I think it's the 12th through to the 16th. 16th again go down the coast. On the left hand side, you've got a drop of like 100 meters down to down to the beach. So to yeah, it's pretty spectacular. Pretty spectacular. Uh, the team there are fantastic. You'll be looked after uh, in a special way. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a great spot. Uh, so next one. Uh, number 11 on your list is Green Monkey. 
it is it is quite a spectacular golf course i've only ever been there once i'd like to go back there again just to sort of like update images but um the signature hole which you'll see which has got the monkey in the bunker um makes for a pretty interesting photograph um but yeah. you know the, the whole thing about it uh tapas is that what's very clever is um fazio tom fazio who's designed it is that you wouldn't know that it's been built in a quarry the first four holes or five holes take you and shield you from the view that is actually uh after the fifth hole it just opens up and then all of a sudden you see this spectacular golf course in this old uh, old quarry um which which he's utilized it's pretty it's pretty cool um next one uh was a golf course i've not really heard about much before on your list it's in india um called yeah. prestige prestige um golf shire in bangalore um oh it's brilliant it's beautiful absolutely beautiful it's uh, you know what I, I i can't remember who uh, designed it um but it's tough it's um it's there's a kind of like a massive lake uh, that's right next to it um uh that, that fills up in the monsoon and um and so this there's most of the holes i like five or six of the holes kind of like go down past that lake um but it's beautiful it's right in the middle of uh of the, of the countryside it's got a backdrop there's some holy mountains i can't remember what the mountain range is called now but again you'll see those in the photographs so this golf course sits right underneath that location next one is one that people will have heard of probably well certainly i had heard of i've been there um tpc sawgrass okay we went there two years ago uh during the trip to the pga show in orlando um in january and we took the drive down to jacksonville to go and, to go and play it um yeah what do you what were your thoughts on it? my only regret um is that the grasses were dormant and it did make for us you know some interesting photographs but i feel like that's a job that needs to be done again especially as you can see from you know just recently the changes that they've made they changed the grasses there and um at that time of the year um you know how it looks now is completely different so it would be good to have an opportunity to go back there and finish that job off because it is a spectacular yeah. golf course yeah my, my, my feeling about it was that it was it was so much fun to play whilst also being a really good test of golf it doesn't have a bad hole on the golf course no. i thought it was absolutely amazing it was and then and then when you get to the 16th and you can see the 17th green uh, and you know that I, even now i still get sort of goosebumps thinking about it and i think that i would definitely put that down as one of my special moments in golf okay well so let, let, let's move away from sawgrass and go to to pine needles and mid pines um now these when i was looking through the photographs that you sent me i thought these were some of the most stunning pictures that you had there tell yeah. us a bit about them for those that have not been to the pinehurst area you've got i think it's maybe 50 odd different golf courses there um all on that sort of sand built built on that sand built and um, um a lot of them are by donald ross so this is his kind of like playground and you know you've obviously got number two as the as the course that uh, everyone wants to play um and i i had to do some photography there uh, a few years back um of a guy called tom stewart who owns a curiosity shop in the village and he said if you've shot number two you've got to go and shoot these two golf courses so he took me down there the next morning and i was completely blown away by uh the the both courses they literally are opposite sides of the road to each other i've joined as an overseas member so we go out there every year showing off now Kev. well yeah but you know it is it's spectacular um they've 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 had the uh, us women's open there i think it's three times they got it again in 2000 and 22 i think so that alone gives you an idea of the quality of the golf courses if they can host that sort of competition so, so uh if you could only pick one of them to play which would it be um pine needles okay um uh next one uh it's, we're going to spain now and yes. uh La, La Cala. you don't really get an idea even from steels of how they've managed to build these three amazing golf courses up in the mountains above Mijas 
And um, I mean, just from an engineering perspective, you know, to build those golf courses the way they've done, they have done, is is just amazing. And I love the place; I really do. The whole experience there, looked after on site, you know, great restaurants, good bars, fantastic golf courses. Um, it, it's it's pretty cool, and I think that's the reason why they include it. Next one, staying in Europe, um, and a. Bernard Langer design golf course again one that you've seen right from the very early stage uh, it's one that I've heard a lot about but never been to uh, tell us about Costa Navarino um, yeah it's 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 a, an amazing experience it's um, uh, but again the views are um, uh, you know uh, 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 brilliant you've um, and it's, there's also the history there is because uh, it's got all the Greek history ancient Greek yes. history um, and, and I'm a big fan of that. So, again, it's another reason for it. Um, but uh, I, I'm supposed to be going back out there this year. Obviously, with things going on, everything's been put on hold. But um, I'm hoping to get back to see how it's developing. There's another two golf courses being built in the area. Um, number five is your first open rotor venue. Yeah, um, I, I've, I've got a kind of like certain affinity with Royal Liverpool. So I first went to Royal Liverpool in 2006. Uh, I was up there shooting some other stuff, but uh, got invited to go there and take some photographs and play the golf course. Never played it before. But the reason why I put that in is because it's where I got my first hole in one on the 13th. But I loved Royal Liverpool. I love that it's a difficult golf course. Um, you know, it's pretty flat. Um, so from a visual point of view, you've got to work really hard to, to, to really get the, uh, the, the, the sort of dynamic photographs there. They've made some changes, which I'm really interested in seeing how they pan out. Um, yeah, the uh, par three there building there looks pretty spectacular, doesn't it? It does. And um, so, and again, I've been invited back, um, uh, hopefully later on this year, to, um, to record those photographs because... They've, they've, have they got the open in 22 there? Is that right? Yeah, so obviously they want to get everything right and ready for that. Um, number four, so from Liverpool to Hawaii, <laughs> lesser trodden path, Muzza. But I, hey, look. <laughs> I know, um, a hell of a place to get to. Uh, it was like a 24-hour journey to get there first time around. Coming back was, was more difficult, but well worth it. I mean, there's two courses, north and the south. And uh, they are spectacular. And, uh, you know, the, the great thing about this was that we used a cherry picker to get some elevation. And I think it's the 15th hole on the south course, um, which is apparently the most photographed par three in the world. Um, it's kind of like you literally are driving over the ocean. I really enjoyed that trip. I'd love to go back down there again. There's so many great golf courses. Um, next one. Yeah. Uh, back in... in um... Uh, a bit closer to home this time, Northern Ireland's Royal Council Down. Um, very, I mean, for a lot of people watching this who follow um, golf in the UK, they will know Royal, Royal Council Down very well. Muzz, what's your take on it? The, the experience of turning up um, a, a golf course that's got so much tradition is really, you know, quite unique. You know, to see the, the, the dunes that are there, to see, you know, sort of how rugged that coastline is. Um, was was quite an experience for me first time round. My first trip there. The, the, the another reason why is because we're supposed to have played eighteen holes with uh, Rory McIlroy, and that was for me what an experience that was with this young lad who's going to be you know the future of um, of British golf. Tough, tough um, test of golf. You know you've got those blind shots that some people complain about. To me, I love it. If you've got a caddy who's standing there telling you where to go and if your ball's okay it's all part of that amazing experience and it should be if you get a chance to go you know everyone says even in the states everyone comes over there and they want to play royal county down and uh you, it's quite easy to see why once you get there well from one iconic links to another one um <clears throat> turnbury yeah also um, term yeah the elsa course yeah go on um Turnbury was my first championship golf course that I ever played. Um, it was early days of my golfing career uh, back in 1987. Um, I was playing off like 22, I think. I, I packed up all other sports and then got into golf. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. 
but the changes they've made, they've taken it from my favourite golf course into an even better golf course. You know, I didn't think you could do that. It really kicks in when you get to the ninth. You know, the ninth was a um, uh, was was a great golf hole. Now they've made it into this um, pretty special par three. Um, and then the tenth, which goes down, you know, is a dog leg left. Um, they've made a few changes to that. I think they've made it longer. Uh, but then the next hole, uh, which was a good par three, uh, is um, is a, a, an amazing looking golf hole and plays very very difficult into into the wind. So it's just little changes like that that um, have elevated it in my you know in my view, not just from playing but also from a visual uh, perspective. Um, it's very very easy to photograph. It's um, yeah, it's 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 wonderful, it really is. Yeah. Well, that leads us on to number one on your list. And I mean, if you think that um, Turnberry is rugged down there when you get round the turn and you start playing the holes down by the lighthouse, um, there's rugged and then there's the number one on your list, which I've never been to it, Mother, but all the photographs I've seen, and I've seen a lot now, um, it looks like, like something from another planet. Tell us about Lotherton. So it's it's in Norway. It's in the Arctic Circle. It's right up there uh, on an island called Gimsoy. Um, and I mean, just getting there is an experience in itself. But when you get there, you wouldn't expect to see a golf course there because the land is so rugged. And, you know, this is just golf at its purest. It really is. And the great thing about it is that the golf course kind of changes on a, on a yearly basis because it's right by the sea. You know, they might get a bit of erosion, which they've got to do more work on certain holes to kind of like reshape them, bring them back into um, uh, the, the, the the natural landscape. But you can see from the shots just how difficult that goal. I have not hit one single golf shot there. I don't, I, you know, I don't need to. I'm, I'm purely there just to soak up the at atmosphere, soak up the, the, the visual um, treatment, the, the spectacular treatment that, uh, that it offers, and then of course you've got the gold, uh, the, the the northern lights in the evening in the winter, uh, which I've only just experienced um, uh, on a very small scale because you need to, you, you know you don't need any cloud base, and every time I've been there, you've had the cloud base. But then also, um, we, you know, we've experienced uh, uh, midnight golf. We can tee off at midnight, which is really quite an experience. Um, because it's, it's it's you know twenty four hour daylight, um, it's built on an old um, Viking burial ground. So there's a bit of respect to certain areas that they've had to uh, be mindful of. But you know even if you weren't playing golf up there, just to go up there for that area for the, to experience that area is 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 yeah is special. It really is. I can see myself going up there three or four times, hopefully in the future, just to experience it. So. That's why it's number one, Tappers. Perfect. Well, I mean, hopefully that gives everybody some inspiration. So, uh, Kevin Murray, thank you very much for your time. I will see you soon. Take care, Tappers. So there you have it. That's our list of 15 of the world's most beautiful golf courses. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm going to um, put a link in in the description below through to Kevin's website, because I mean, if you're into your golf course design or photography, it's well worth a look to see what there is there. It's an absolutely fantastic website. Lots of great photographs to take a look at. Um, also, I appreciate that uh, the world of golf is large. There are many absolutely fantastic golf courses that we didn't get to include in this video. So the question is, what would you like to see us include if we do a part two to this later down the line? We would be very interested to hear your thoughts. Just leave some comments below. Um, guys, that's it for now. Please do, um, if you've liked the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button as well, and then the little notification bell to make sure you don't miss any of our videos whenever we post them. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, do stay safe and we will see you next time.